Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Casa del Chapo. We're sitting out back deck enjoying a glorious morning out here with our coffee on the back deck. And we're thinking about poker because, you know, we're poker players. We're always thinking about poker. And today's poker tip brought to you by the Sharp app and DFS Army is going to be shortening your stack size. Why would we shorten our stack size? Honestly, at the 1, 2, and 1, 3 low stakes red chip hero grind level, it's going to make your decisions much, much easier. I sit in wild and reckless games, maybe you do too, where pre-flop raise sizes are $12, $15 on the regular, and you're sitting on a two to $300 stack. Let me explain to you a couple of reasons why we're going to want to shorten that stack. You're almost, you're almost playing on a short stack as it is. Once you go up to $15, you've only got, what, 12 to 15 times your raise size left in your stack, if you get called $15, $15, $15, dollars a $45 pot, you've got about $185 left in your stack. You're looking at an SPR of four. You're not, if you're raising to $15, you're not even playing a one, two, one, three game anymore. You're kind of playing a two, five game and you're on a 200 to $300 stack. You're short stacked for the two, five level. But that's the game you're playing. You play your game based on the initial raise sizes, the initial opening of the pot. That's what determines, not the number that's up there on the casino tote board. You can find yourself in some one, two deep stack games that play like five, 10 or worse. You need to know that going in because if you're capped at a $300 max buy-in, you're on a short stack and you need to play accordingly. You need to adjust. You need to play big cards, top pair type cards, because you're going to be all in in a flash. You're going to bet big pre-flop to get the field shortened out, raise to 15, raise to 20, raise to 25. God forbid there's a straddle out there for five, six bucks and you're raising to 30. You're doing this to discourage other college. You can't make a living going four and five and six ways and nut camping and playing five card bingo. You, you, you're you going to be really riding the variance roller coaster like you never thought before you're going to win some big pots and that's going to be great but it's going to take two pair plus three of a kind you're going to get counterfeited a lot you're going to end up with your sets being pushed into straight draws and guys aren't going to fold they're going to hit their straights on the river and fleece you because the board didn't pair all sorts of things are going to happen to you however if you can control that size of that pre-flop raise shorten that stack down to an spr of two three something like that you're in a much more manageable situation your baby pairs, your threes, fours, fives go out the window, mostly. Your suited connectors, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, go out the door, mostly. You're playing the big broadways and you're playing the big pocket pairs and you're jumping that raise size up there and you're setting yourself up to flop over cards, top pair, top kicker, and then just blast away. Now, when you raise to 20 to 25 bucks pre-flop and you get one caller, and let's say the pot's 40 bucks, when your SPR on $200 stack is already under a five, okay? If you pick up a third caller and that P and that raise side, that pre-flop pot is now a $60 pot, your, your SPR is like a three. It's go time with top pair. Now you can play passively with aggressive opponents and let them, because you're going in anyway, you're committed. Your SPR is so short, your stack to pot ratio is so short that mathematically it is correct to just let them bet, 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 and you go in if they win, great. Why? We know the standard set hunting rules, 10 to one, correct? If I have a $5 raise size, I need at least, what, 50 bucks to get out of that pot to get paid off. If I have a $20 raise size, I need at least $200 to get paid off. Modern theory suggests it's more like 15 times. So if I have a $20 raise size, I really need a $300 stack. I'm not always going to get that. When my opponent has $300 and he's the effective stack, I've got 400. We're not always going to get all of his stack, right? That's why we need such deep stacks to be able to play such implied odds poker. So when we shorten that stack size down, he can set hunt us all he wants. He ain't getting paid enough. It's okay. Yes, he won the pot that time. His pocket eights cracked our pocket aces. Great. He didn't get paid off enough to make money in the long run for all the times that he's going to whiff and we're going to bet flop, bet turn and push him right out of the pot right? Or he's going to call us down and be wrong because he thinks we're on a whiffed ace king or something like that. Same thing with six, seven. He's going to hit two pairs sometimes and it's going to hurt, but he's not getting the 20 to 25 times the raise size that he needs to be able to get paid long-term. 
right? If you listen to your Jonathan Littles, your Bart Hansons, those guys will tell you about the implied odds numbers. I encourage you to go look them up. But once you realize that somebody needs 20x to actually get paid enough for the, the speculative hand that they're playing, you raise your raise size and you run ultimate defense against that. Go ahead. I'll pay you off. It's okay. I'm going to get away from the hand some. You're not going to get paid other times. You're not going to get my stack every single time that you need to to make that profitable for you. So we can eliminate that from our own game when we're raising bigger. We can make mostly pre-flop decisions. We can squeeze more. We can three bet more. We can do all sorts of things. We can also get into these pots and let those aggressive guys bet into us, like I mentioned before, because we're not going anywhere. We can keep his range nice and wide if he's an aggressive, bluffy type of player. And we can rest assured that we're going to hold up often enough to grind out a profit. We have eliminated our turn and river decisions, which I know that isn't playing poker, but it is. Because at the one two one three level where these guys are very, very hard to read, this becomes something that allows you to sit back confidently and just grind off money, build up a bankroll, get out of the one, two and one, three stakes, get into two, three, two, five uncapped games, et cetera, where you can play deeper stack poker and start actually playing poker. That's the goal. That's what red chip heroes are trying to do. We're trying to grind up beyond the two, five level. And I'm the guy that can help you do it. My name's Chop It On. Thanks for listening to the channel. Like and subscribe and comment below. Even if you think I'm full of crap. I'll probably respond. See you later.